It has been said <laughs> uh, by such learned people as critics that um, you actually are heading toward writing an opera, and you very often write a huge kind of Puccini line anyway. Mm -hmm. So uh, is, is that something that you have an ambition for? Well, what happened was I got interested around the time of Anyone Can Whistle in writing songs, song forms that involved traditional operatic forms, duets, trios, moderately, for at least for Broadway, complicated choral pieces. By the time I got to Company and Follies, I was hooked on trying those different things. Which you do, by the way, forgive me, not in the accustomed, uh, by now, Broadway tradition of you have a line, I have a line, you ask a question, I give the answer, but you split up uh, a syllable at a time sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, because I love playing around with it. And mm -hmm. also, you see, I like so much the sense of conversation between people. Um, there's a song, as a matter of fact, in, uh, in Company I'll get to in a minute. But I don't like to think of myself as an opera composer or going towards opera. But I do want to get into more and more singing in proportion to the speech. But I don't want to lose the conversational quality. I want the lyrics to also have interest. Now, there are many critics and people who write on music who say you can't do that, that it is a paradox. That is to say, if music is to carry the evening, then giving prominence to the lyrics is going to undercut the music and is ruining the purpose. I don't think that's true. I don't see any reason why a compromise can't be made. And by compromise, I do not mean a giving up of something, but utilizing vocal techniques to make lyrics come out to make lyric points. To go back.